Welcome into the Inside Bassmaster Podcast. I'm your host, Ronnie Moore, as usual. My co-host, normally Kyle Jesse, he is up in the wild blue north. I guess we can say he's up with St. Croix and some anglers like Bob Downey, Caleb Kufal, and Pat Schlopper, and they're all shooting some video content. So we're going to give Kyle a break this week. We're going to do a solo podcast, and it's going to be a shorter one. It's going to be a little quick one uh, just to get you ready for the final St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open of the season and it's the culminating it's the finale of the entire year not only does it in the central division it is the ninth and final open of the season which means we have a lot of movement to be had we have three overall qualifiers that will be decided at this event we have three central opens qualifiers that will be decided at this event we also have a bassmaster classic spot up for grabs as well so we basically have seven important uh, opportunities to punch their ticket to whatever goal they may have. And we're going to see it all come down on Fox Sports 1 and Bassmaster.com on Saturday. And so if you're watching this podcast, it's probably, you know, during the event. This is going up on October 20th, which is Thursday, day one of Sam Rayburn. So I'm going to get you situated today with a couple point standings factors, a couple fishing conditions factors, and I get kind of setting the scene for what may play out over the next few days of competition. So hop in. We're going to do some points race real quick uh, after I do um, some fishing reports setting the scene. So Sam Rayburn in the fall, like most bodies of water, it could be a little bit tough. And so some of these anglers that have been fishing at Sam Rayburn uh, have kind of said, hey, it's not been easy. It's been a grind. Big ones, obviously, still showing up for photos on social media because that is what Sam Rayburn has. They have big bass. Um, But in the fall, it could probably get a little bit tricky like it does other places because in the south right now, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas, it's been cold. I mean, it has been lows in the 38 to 45 region for the most part. Uh, There's been some frost in times, no freezing, freezing temperatures, but very cold for the south this time of the year. The news reports were saying, at least in Arkansas, possible record setting cold with if we if we broke the freezing mark, it'd be the earliest we'd ever done that um, in a calendar year. So Texas is feeling the feeling the chilliness as well. And what that kind of does is we're coming out of the summertime of fishing at Sam Rayburn. So there's going to be fish shallow. It's going to be fish deep. Uh, the water temperature is very warm. And when it gets so cold so quick over the last week or so, that water temperature starts to dramatically cool off. Not only are the days getting shorter, so the sun that is out there isn't beaming down for as long. It does get colder, it gets cooler. The nights uh, come much quicker. So those fish are going to start to be on the move. The ones who aren't shallow were probably thinking they're going to head shallow. So some anglers that decide to fish deep where maybe they found some brush piles and some other offshore points and things that we've seen playing in the fact in the past they may have some fish but by the time saturday gets here those fish may be leaving those spots so we'll have to keep an eye on that at least throughout the stories some of watching bass track and seeing some of the social media reports some of these anglers may end up splitting their tournaments they may fish deep a little bit and then once that starts to fizzle they may have to go figure out something shallow We're going to see some ditches and some creeks factor because these fish are going to be in all stages and really, you know, they're going to be on the move when it comes to chasing bait as well. This is a great time to feed up and this is what they're prepping to do before the winter. So we all we've seen uh, Keith Combs post some some videos about fishing in the fall, at least at Sam Rayburn transitioning to that topwater bite. If we do see a good topwater bite, that would be fantastic. I believe the last time we hear this time of the year. It was Sam Rayburn in 2020 in the fall, and it was one of the culminating events of the Opens as well. I think there was one more after it, maybe Lake Louisville and then Neely Henry, but it was in October, I do believe, and it was still hot. I mean, we still saw very hot temperatures for a lot of these anglers fishing out there, and so it's going to be a little bit different this week. So probably not the predictable Sam Rayburn that people were hoping for. So with that being said, that's going to shake up some of the points races. And I'm going to pull up the point standings here and read them off and look at them for you. So just to set the scene for 2023, we've been throwing out the new rules and the new changes. Uh, and people are kind of confused sometimes on what we've told them. It's going to be like next year versus what it still is like this year. So things that don't change, you can still fish one division and make the classic. So if you fish three events uh, and win one of them you'll make the classic that remains the same for this year it'll be the same for next year 
But those elite qualifier spots, that's going to be for those who fish all nine opens. So next year, we won't have a northern, southern, and central opens. We're going to have division one, two, and three because those three divisions, it doesn't necessarily matter how regionally they're based because you have to fish all of them to make the elite series. But to make the classic, you can still fish one division. So that remains the same. For 2022, though, this season, what this event means is we've sent three qualifiers from the northern opens three from the Southern, and we're going to send three more from the Central. Then when all of those points races shake out at the exact same time, we'll also know which three will qualify from the overall race. And so we're kind of going to have some double qualifiers come into play, and we'll keep an eye on that as well. But one thing's for sure, in the Northern Opens, which finished up first this year, the three qualifiers for that uh, division were Keith Poche, Alex Weatherall, and Kyoyo Fujita. So those three anglers qualified from the Northern Opens. Now we go to the Southerns. We had Cooper Gallant, Bryant Smith, and Joey Safuentes, which is very cool. These six anglers that qualified in these two divisions, we had a Connecticut angler in Alex Weatherall. We had a Japanese angler in Kyoyo uh, Fujita. We had an Alabama transplant angler in Keith Poche. Then we go to the Southerns. We had Cooper Gallant from Canada, Bryant Smith from West, uh, not West, He's from the West Coast, not from West Virginia. He's from California. And then we had Joey Sefuentes from Arkansas. So we had six anglers represented from six different regions of the United States, which is very cool. And now we get to the Central Opens and the overall race. And this is where we're going to get interesting. So let me go to through the Central Opens first, because the deal is if you qualify as one of those three spots in a specific division, you are going to qualify for the Elite Series from that division. Now, if you also qualify overall, we will skip your name in the overall and we will work down the overall list. So people have been wondering, well, Keith Poche is qualified in the Northern Opens. If he does it overall, are we working down the Northerns or are we working down the overall? We will work down the overall and uh, kind of it'll be a benefit to those who have fished all nine Opens. They get, you know, it's been a tight race uh, for a lot of these people right below, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. All those points are so tight. They have dedicated their season and fished all nine. We're rewarding that by working down the overall, not just the individual divisions. So those are set. If you're fourth in the Northerns, fourth in the Southerns, or I mean, not fourth, uh, the fourth person, you know, I think uh, in the Southerns, Brian New won the points race, but he's already in the Elite Series. So he's all good, good to go. We skipped him and did Cooper, uh, Joey, and Brian Smith. So Looking at the points races there, if you're in the first man out of a specific division, I'm sorry. You did great, great season, but we're going to work down the overall list to decide those qualifiers. When it comes to the centrals, we've got David Gaston, Jimmy Washam, and Todd Reisinger. Those are the top three in the points race. Uh, David Gaston and Jimmy Washam have had fantastic central open seasons so far. They both top 10 at Ross Barnett. They both top 10 at the Red River. David's only given seven points back to the field. You can gain a possible 400 points out of these first two events. He has 393. You'd figure he'd have, he'd have a big lead, but Jimmy Washam did the same thing he did. Two top tens. He's at 390. So a three-point race right there from first to second. Todd Reisinger in third at 371, about 19 points behind Jimmy Washam. Then we've got a couple anglers that kind of stack up close in points. Doug Ewens, Nick LeBrun. Uh, and Bradley Hallman all are within four points of each other at 366, 362, and 362. So the important thing to factor in here when you look at that race, those top six, relatively close, 31 points. That's the way it should be. That is a three-tournament sample after Sam Rayburn. It's only a two-tournament sample right now. So having a couple anglers, six anglers within 30 points, that is usual. We'll see some fluctuation there. The one thing that helps David Gaston out is he is sitting currently second in the overall points race. So let's just say it's a tight race in the centrals. He doesn't do so hot at Sam Rayburn and gets passed up and finishes fourth. He has a pretty significant lead over a lot of different guys in the overall race. And we're going to have some double qualifiers come into play. So no double qualifiers right now in the uh, centrals, but in the overall, we will see that uh, we will see that transpire. We've got Keith Poche leading the points race. He's got a pretty hefty lead, about a 40-something point lead over David Gaston, uh, 20 more points to Cooper Gallant. And that's what's, that's what's important. Keith Poche, Cooper Gallant, first and third, they are already qualified. 
if they stay in the top three of qualifiers, doesn't have to be top three right now, if they stay in the top three of qualifiers, they will double qualify, which means we skip their name in the overalls and we go to the next person. So looking at the first three that are not qualified in either the division or the overall, because David Gaston's right now the points leader in the centrals, so the first three in the overall points race that aren't qualified by any specific division that we look at are Cole Sands, Logan Parks, and John Suckup. When you look at that, they kind of got some a little bit of distance in between the points race, though. Cole Sands sit at 12.53. He's only nine behind Cooper Gallant, only about 29 behind uh, David Gaston, and then he's a, a good bit, almost 70 points behind Keith Poche. So... The odds of him catching Gaston and Gallant, they're they're high. Um, but the odds of him staying in that top four, you know, but in the overall top spot for qualification, the odds are very high there. Uh, we have 188 anglers fishing at Sam Rayburn. So 200 points for first, 13 points for last, as long as they catch a bass and weigh in successfully. So the points, you know, fluctuation there. You don't want to slip up here, but guys like Cole Sands, He's got a, a pretty decent lead right now. A guy like David Gaston, let's just look. If David Gaston didn't qualify through the Central Opens and he qualified through the overalls, David Gaston sitting at 1282. He currently has a, like I said, 29-point lead over Cole Sands. He has a 67-point lead over Logan Parks, and then it goes down. He's got a 74-point lead over John Suckup. And that's the first four that technically haven't punched their ticket yet that we keep an eye on. Right below Parks and Suckup is Kinta Kamira uh, and then Shane Leinberger. So Kinta Kamira, we would skip over him. He is on the Elite Series, had a great year, top 20 in our AOI race. He is on the Elite Series in good standing qualification-wise, doesn't need the spot. So we would skip him in the standings if he was in the mix uh, mixed in between these anglers. Shane Leinberger, this is where the gaps really get far, though. Leinberger's at 1185. He is about uh, 23 points behind John Suckup uh, and then another seven, like a 30 behind Logan Park. So they start to get some gaps there from Lineberger to Bradley Hallman, which Bradley Hallman's in the race overall in ninth place, but also in the central opens, got a be much better shot of qualifying in the centrals than he does overall. He's 51 points behind Shane Lineberger. So when you're looking at the points race after eight opens, you're like, hey, I'm in the top 10. I've got a shot. But just to get one position, it's 51 points because those gaps start to spread out. If you did well two times in a row and you did okay two times in a row, those guys probably got to pull away just a little bit. And with Lineberger making the top 10 at Hartwell, he kind of spread that distance a little bit over Bradley Hallman. So a 50-point gap from eighth to ninth. So Bradley Hallman and Kyle Patrick, they got to get, if they want to qualify overall, they got to get a top 15 minimum to have a shot. Now, obviously, if Lineberger, Suckup, Parks, Sands all get a top 20, it's null and void. But they have to do their job, which means they got to almost make or they have to make the final day at Sam Rayburn. So just to run through that one more time, the overall points race is Keith Poche, David Gaston, Cooper Gallant, Cole Sands, Logan Parks, and John Suckup. That's the first six. Two of those currently qualified through a specific division. David Gaston would be the third. He is qualified technically right now in the centrals. It, he has a you know a very good resume after the first two events. If he stays solid there and makes the top three, he'll qualify and he'll double as well. We will skip those three, go to Cole Sands, Logan Parks, John Suckup. So it's going to be a tight battle there as it is about 70 points between those four with Sands, Parks, Suckup, and Lineberger, and then another um, – uh, 51 points, like I said, down to Hallman. So 120 points from Cole Sands to Bradley Hallman, the first five qualifiers or so separated by 120 points. So going to have to big time catch him and hope for some help slipping. But I mentioned it. That's the overall look. But we mentioned the top three or four in the central opens. Bradley Hallman's in that mix. We mentioned him. There's a couple uh, current pros that are traveling across the country and also fishing the Opens. They're hoping to make their ticket to the Elite Series with the Central Opens, and that would be Nick LeBrun and Bradley Hallman. Right now, they're on the outside looking in about nine points from Todd Risinger to those two anglers. Very doable, nine points in 188-person field. 
very doable. So Nick LeBrun, keep an eye on him. He's done very well at Sam Rayburn before. Bradley Hallman, former Elite Series pro. Uh, he's looking to get back to the Elite Series. We know that if you follow his YouTube and his social media, that's been his goal and his journey. Um, and he's looking to do that this year before the changes for next year happen. Nick LeBrun, I mentioned his name. He's won two times this year on the pro level. He's carrying some great momentum, a great open season as well. If he can finish out here, he'd be great, a great addition to the Elite Series. He's just outside there. And four people's information. Those two angles are tied. So when you see 362 and 362 and you wonder, how do we pick fifth? How do we pick sixth? Nick LeBrun has the tiebreaker when it comes to the overall weight. Just like the Elite Series with points ties, we do – Overall weight ties for day one and day two. Full field days of competition for opens. They do the weight for that. So Nick LeBrun, I think he got second or so at, at uh, Ross Barnett, at, at minimum a top five. Um, so his weight, which at that event was higher than what the event was at uh, Red River, I believe. So with that being the, the case, Nick LeBrun's weight in that event boosted him up there. Uh, and Bradley Holman did not make the final day at Red River, so his day one and two weights are okay. But they end up equaling out. What Bradley beat Nick by at Red River um, ends up weighing out, and uh, Nick barely has the edge there in the tiebreaker weight. Cole Sands, we mentioned him in the overall race. If he moves up and does well in this event in the centrals, he's in seventh. If he moved up into the top three, he would double qualify most likely because that means he's going to stay put where he's at in the overall race, which means we could end up having four double qualifiers if Gaston and Sands both do well this week. We would skip both their names on the points list. So we'll keep an eye on that. That would help guys like Bradley Hallman and Shane Lineberger in the overall and Kyle Patrick. Looking at some other guys in the top 10 of the Central Opens, mentioned it, Cole Sands in seventh. James Nigmeyer, former Elite Series Pro in eighth. He's looking to make it back as well. And when I say the points are tight, it goes one or two, two or three points between each position. So Nick Meyer, just two points behind Cole Sands, um, about 22 points from third place. So a lot of movement still to be had there. We go down to Kyle Norsetter in ninth and Charlie Hartley in 10th. Uh, some other anglers right below that. Keith Poche had a fantastic Sam Rayburn. He would move up from 13th and he could possibly help out some double qualifier situations. Uh, guys like Brett Pruitt, former on, formerly on the Elite Series, are right below him. Logan Latuso, former or son of former Elite Series angler Robbie Latuso, he's in 11th right there. So we'll keep an eye on a lot of these guys. But if you're tuned, if you're tuning in this week at Sam Rayburn and you want the drama, there is going to be drama because we've got Central Opens points race, the overall, and a winner at this event, which we're going to see go down on Bassmaster Live on Saturday. It's all going to be so fun. We know that these guys are going to catch them at Sam Rayburn. Hey, at minimum, even if it's tough, 10 anglers are guaranteed. Hey, they're going to do better than the rest, and they're going to make the final day. But uh, I wanted to hop on here and set the scene. If you're watching this podcast, it went up Thursday morning as uh, the tournament was kicking off. Make sure you watch Bass Track all week for your favorite pros. Some of those guys have been doing Bass Track just to update their family and friends on how they're doing. Um, stay tuned with that. The stories, uh, the weigh-in feeds and everything like that, we'll be posting up those on YouTube each night. And so stay tuned to this tournament. It's the last Bassmaster Open of the year, really the last Bassmaster tournament for freshwater. We will do a, a couple redfish tournament days on Bassmaster Live, and then we've got the nation and the team championship to finish up. So just a few more fishing tournament days for the 2022 season. You won't want to miss it. I uh, wanted to hop on here without Kyle and knock out a solo podcast real quick, setting the scene about Sam Rayburn. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you always enjoy the podcast, we appreciate it when you like and subscribe and leave a review. Uh, we do our best to bring you guys content, and you won't want to miss next week's episode. We're going we're gonna to have plenty of off-season to talk to all the Opens qualifiers, as many as we can. Um, we got to talk to Louis Minetti, the College Classic Bracket Qualifier, in the last episode. Make sure you check that one out. Um, it'll be in the YouTube Bassmaster Podcast playlist. Go check that out and watch it. Or... Like I said, if you like to listen to this podcast and not watch it, you can listen on all your favorite streaming platforms like Apple, Spotify, all those podcast platforms. So tune in and check them out there. Our guest next week, just a little hint, it's kind of a big deal. 
He's got his own fishing show. He's one of my one of the commentators that I work with on Bassmaster Live. You won't want to miss his insight. We're going to ask him some fishing questions, some life questions. It's going to be a really good sit down with the one and only Mark Zona. We're going to make sure we work it out with his schedule and knock that out. So it'll be good talking to the Z Train next week. But we'll also be discussing Sam Rayburn, everything that happened after this event. So make sure you tune in and see the fruition of the Opens come, come to fruition there. Nine spots for the uh, points race. And then we've got three for the overall. So 12 qualifiers. They'll all be decided this week and one of the classic spots. So for Ronnie Moore, Kyle Jesse's up north. Hope he makes it safe back to Alabama. We will see him in the next podcast. Um, he's been busting his butt working hard. We'll see him there. You'll catch Tommy Sanders, myself, and Such Bassmaster Live on Saturday for the final St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn. We'll see you in the next one.